and a very good morning to you. And again, as usual, it is morning. It's quarter to one. But that doesn't matter, does it? We're all here to have fun. And today on the bench, I thought I'd do a radio. And, and this is another tube radio, valve radio, whichever you want to call it. It's a 1953 Pilot 85A model. Right, I'm going to break in at this point. What I've just said is complete rubbish. Basically, the radio is a Pilot T85M model, which actually has a set of miniature valves in it, as opposed to the larger valves that the 85A and the 85U had in them. A very nice little set, to be quite honest. Uh, let's fire up the other cameras and you can have a look at it. Right, OK, so here we are. Now we're looking at the front of the set. And as you can see, it's uh, a little bit dusty, but apart from that, it looks fairly good. Now, this isn't Bakelite, I'm talking bollocks. And as I say, it's made by Pilot Radio Company of London. Now, the grill is a plastic moulding. It's not a cloth, so that's probably why it hasn't rotted and looked awful. The glass is real glass as opposed to plastic, and the frame itself is, is pretty nice. It's got all the controls on the sides, so if you're going to use it in a tight space, you actually have to leave a good, you know, three to four inches either side just to get your hand in so that you can change any of the controls. Now, on the left-hand side, you've got a volume and on off switch also on the left hand side you have a i believe it's bass and treble control on the right hand side over here you have the tuning and you have the wave band switch now the set is long medium and short wave only so it's not one of the fm models and short wave actually runs from 5 to 16 megahertz 50 to 16 meters which is not a bad tuning range uh, it does have a log scale and i'll be honest i have already fired it up and it doesn't and i say it doesn't because you get all the tubes glowing and you get let's connect it we've got the set there we're ready to power it on and because it is a hot chassis it's connected to my isolation transformer. Danger, danger! I so here we go. That's AC connected. Let's turn it on and see what happens. We just have to wait a little while for the tubes to warm up. Now I've turned the volume full on. There we go. Absolutely nothing. No pilot lights. No popping from the switch. And no noise from the wave chain, from the uh, tuning indicator. So we've definitely got to take this one to pieces. we're getting absolutely nothing on it now i don't actually know whether the tubes are any good i don't know much about it except from what i've looked at on the circuit diagram so let's just kill the ac and let me get it out of the chassis uh, out of the cabinet and see what it looks like ah! okay right here we are back again radio out of the cabinet and the first thing I can say is it's filthy, absolutely filthy. Um, I'm just pushing it back on the bench here a little bit and I'm gonna bring the speaker into shot 
Now, I've taken the speaker out as well because it's connected in directly to the chassis here. And rather than try and drill out the rivets while it's in the cabinet, I thought easier to take the speaker out. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to check the speaker's working. It's probably the best thing to do. And you can probably tell by the fan noise in the background that uh, I've got the generator on. So here's the audio output leads and... Let's just touch it to the... Yep, that works um, at this time of the morning. I don't want to leave that on too long. The next one is to check that the output transformer itself is working. So again, we'll put the generator on the output transformer. Absolutely nothing out of the speaker. Now, the terminals of the, the speaker are soldered directly to the bottom of the transformer. I'm just going to try and get it into shot if I can show it on this camera here. I don't know if you'll just about see the wires going across to the terminals there. Now that's there. The other wires that are coming off the speaker actually go straight to the external loudspeaker. The speaker's working. Obviously we got noise out of it and uh, it is a nice old roller but not get anything out of the output transformer is a little bit worrying. Let's get the meter in. Um, let's go to continuity. Okay. And let's first of all check to see if we've got anything at all, and we haven't. So that tells me that the lack of sound is the output transformer. It's not the end of the world, but it means I'll have to find one. Now, I might have one in my box of bits, but that is something obviously that I will have to look at. So that's the first problem that we've got with this. The second is we're gonna clean it up. I suppose we could check to see that everything lights up really, shouldn't we? I'm gonna turn the generator off because I don't need the audio generator on anymore. Now, as you can see, dust bunnies galore, spiders. It's, it's not pretty. It is double switched on the main side, so that's a bonus. We can see that there's a couple of waxy caps there. Everything else looks like it's mica discs. That one might be suspect. We want to check that the voltage on the main capacitor is actually getting through and it's not short. Now that, I can't see any bulges on it. So we might be lucky and we might have a good capacitor there. Let's get the meter. Let's just check straight across the terminals. There's one. 248 volts AC. So we're getting AC in and we are getting the tubes lighting up. One to chassis and let's have a look at this capacitor. 4 volts, 0.6 volts, 29 volts, and uh, of course I was measuring that capacitor wrong, wasn't I? Right, capacitor. 219, 186, 141. And what I have noticed just there, and I don't know if you can see it, that capacitor has a crack right through the middle of it. And would you believe it, it's one of those Hunt's capacitors, which are notorious for failing. And there's another one there that's got a crack in it. Yeah, the next time you see this radio, it will probably be capped, uh, at least. And hopefully we'll be getting some noise out of it. I'll try and find an audio transformer. If I can't repair this one, I'm going to see if I can get this one off, see where the break is. It may well have been cooked completely, I don't know. 
I also have to make sure that uh, it's got what it should have inside here as uh, the correct tubes. Obviously with no dial lights I can't tell what's going on so uh, it could be a little bit dangerous but yeah I think, think job number one clean it so that we can actually see what we're doing. Job number two replace obvious faulty components such as the capacitors that have got cracks in them. Job number three output transformer change that or repair it whichever I can do and then from there hopefully we can get this thing working. So until then thanks very much for watching and hopefully we'll see you again soon and bye for now.